Hello and welcome to another video. Today, thanks to a tip from this comment, I'll be playing with Scrap Mechanic's Mechanical Parts mod. They mentioned a Gears mod, and though I knew there used to be a Gears mod, I didn't know that the Mechanical Parts mod existed. This mod goes far beyond Gears, as you'll see, and I really barely scratched the surface of it. Though that comment was actually in reference to making a better clock mechanism, which I may get around to, something else I enjoy making and is a good test for the mod is a rear differential. By the way, if you want me to make something specific in this game or another, leave a comment. I would love to do things that I know someone actually wants to see, as long as I think it'd make a good video. Before I get into the build process, I'll explain what a differential actually is. Here's a diagram from drivingfast.net. The green gear slash shafts go out to the wheels, the orange one is driven by the engine and I'll call that the drive shaft, the yellow one I'll call the crown gear, and the blue ones I will call spider gears. Though my terminology might not be completely accurate, the idea is that this mechanism allows the constant speed from the engine to let either wheel rotate independently, giving the most power where it's needed. By the way, I actually wanted this video to be about an electromagnetic engine to start with, which is why you see those red logic type blocks periodically, but I'll save that for some other creation. Anyway, with all that preface done, let's get to the game. As I mentioned, this mod is very complicated. That's why you see this long platform with a bunch of examples on it. It's a workshop item designed for this mod. I took a couple of gears from this and saved them on my lift for future use, as building the parts yourself isn't really possible because of the complex hitboxes. This also means that you can only ever build on one side of the gear, which quickly became a problem. What I'm doing here by trying to put two pipes on this gear is to find the best way to add the two spider gears onto the crown gear. This is pretty much the most important part, so I figured I would start there. Back to the hitbox issue I mentioned, I wasn't able to build off the front of the gear where I actually needed to, so my options were to build off of the back or glitch weld onto the front. Since the back wouldn't work, I went with the glitch welding route, which was super easy with the glitch welder mod. You can see I got something that visually looks very close to what I need, but there were a number of issues with it. The small gear I have on the bottom actually takes up a full block, meaning I couldn't put another one on top if I wanted to, and I did. Also, because the gears were kind of half blocks, the pipe didn't actually glitch weld correctly, so when I tried to save it on a lift, it all fell apart. It was at this point that I realized, if you look at the diagram again, the crown gear needed to have a hole in it for the wheel shaft. The mod does have the perfect gear for this, as you can see here, but it actually seems to be made of two separate parts that you can see by the blinking paint that completely break when glitch welding. This means that the angled type gear was out of the question. My last resort was the normal type of gear with a hole in it, which fortunately did end up working, though not completely accurate to the diagram because of the parallel teeth. Okay, I'm gonna take a minute for an interlude here because I just wanna give a big thanks for all the support of my last video. If you want, you can skip to the time code on the screen and you don't have to hear this, it's just boring stats. During day two of the upload, it got over 2,500 views, which is more than I've ever gotten, including some of my shorts. It was watched for a total of just about 240 hours, or about 10 days of just my voice, which is a lot. I also received 89 subscribers since then, three times what I had before. I read every comment, which wasn't a lot to be fair, but most of them were very nice, including this one guy who came from the future, I guess. Thank you for the optimism. These numbers are far from impressive relative to some people, but they mean a lot to me. Frankly, my ideas aren't very original and my format isn't either, but I'm just putting stuff out there that I enjoy making, so I'm happy to see at least a few other people enjoy it too. Anyway, back to the video. I moved on from testing there to trying to actually put the differential together. I built two pipes on bearings to act as the wheel shafts and then started trying to connect them with the differential in the middle. It really was like a game of Tetris trying to figure out the order in which things needed to be welded so I could avoid conflict and make it function properly. I tried putting this caution block down so I could weld to that, which didn't really end up working. I also tried welding from the inside of the gear, which also didn't work. I ended up removing some blocks and attaching them to the base so I could weld the gear on one side without interfering. I finally got the crown gear in its proper place, and then realized it was welded to everything I didn't want it to be welded to. I fixed that by welding it on a bearing so it was a separate object. After some rearranging, I got the gear to go on properly, without interfering, the arms in the proper shape and the core gears in the correct location. I then immediately realized that there was way too much play in the crown gear as it immediately fell out of place. Okay, now if I delete that, I did not think about that part. I fixed that by adding a second spider gear, which isn't strictly necessary, but I thought it would help. It did help, but I realized that I somehow needed the crown gear to be directly attached to the same creation, or it would just be endless issues. I actually then remembered that the mod has an absolutely perfect piece for this, a through bearing whose internal and external pieces are completely separate. If I use this mod again, it will be for this piece exclusively. It's extremely useful, and I used it in a number of different spots in the final build. With pretty much all of the headaches caused by an hour of trying to put some gears together solved by a single piece, I tried moving on to testing. 
First though, in order to drive the input, I needed a glitch welded double gear thing, as the half block gears weren't on the correct sides and they weren't really meshing. It also ended up being useful in other places too. Finally though, I got to put the gears to the test. It was so satisfying finally seeing the gears mesh and rotate correctly. I put down an engine to test with, built the other side of the axle, and tried to make it differentiate stuff by locking either side. You can also see now what exactly the purpose of this mechanism is. But then if I seize this bearing up, this one rotates faster. Which, yes, this is officially a differential. If I seize that one up, this one rotates faster. As past me said, when one side is caused to rotate slower, like the inside wheel of a turn, the other one is sped up to make up the difference. This improves controllability on turning, as well as traction and tire preservation. And other stuff too, I'm sure. I'm not a car guy. Anyway, with the main mechanism down, all I had to do was put it on a car. What I should have done, in hindsight, is build the car off of the differential. That way I didn't have to connect it to the monstrosity of an electromagnetic engine I mentioned earlier. But at this point, I still wanted to use that engine, so I pushed forward. I started by placing down two of those through bearings for the wheels, so the shafts could be connected to the body and the differential. The differential ended up being too large while rotating to fit in line with the output shafts, so I built a gear train from the wheel bearings up to where the differential would sit. After a bunch of tinkering to get the differential welded on, I added an engine and tested it again to make sure it worked in the air. I also dropped it to the ground for its first ground test. How are those gears faring? Not too bad. Next, just like every video, I spent an hour and a half on work I would end up deleting, where I was just trying to get the gears to go from this engine to the differential. I'll go through a couple tries of me getting that working. The reason this part was so difficult is because the differential was a block too far away and too far down. The obvious solution would be to move the whole thing up and over, which would have been easy, but instead I tried to force it to work again. I first tried to connect it using a perpendicular gear of the same type, which skipped quite a bit because they weren't in line. I also then tried to brace this, which is when I learned that you can't glitch weld to the smallest gears because their weird hitboxes make them explode, which makes this more difficult. Dang it, why did that happen? I tried many ways to do a traditional gear chain over to the differential too, but that didn't work because it was one block too low, and the big gears didn't properly mesh at that angle. Oh wait. Those aren't on the same level, though. Another try was to rearrange the gears such that I could put a medium one at an off angle and correct its height. This almost worked, and it went together, but it skipped and was lopsided because this wasn't an intended behavior. Eventually, though, I came to my senses and just moved the differential into the proper location. Finally, I came to something that worked pretty well and meshes correctly. After testing with another engine, it even started to move the car already. Initial tests with my electromagnetic engine, however, were very poor. It just moved way too fast for the gears to work. The small contact from each gear tooth meant that they kept glitching through each other at these speeds. I tried to force it to work, but it wasn't happening, so I ended up settling for just the vanilla electric engine. Last minute, I also decided that while I was using gears, I would throw on some rack and pinion steering to the front wheels, just for that extra realism that this build totally, definitely already had going for it. I also just wanted an excuse to use the through bearings again. Come on, Axolot, give us some stuff like this. Look how cool and useful these bearings are. I realize that this design wouldn't work in real life, and it is pulling on the bearings, but it looks clean and that isn't the focus at all, so I like it. And with that, and a whole lot of minor tweaking, the car was completed. It's incredibly slow and ridiculously impractical, but it works pretty well and it looks really cool. I'll put a time lapse in the background while I do an outro here. To see it working, pay attention to how the spider gear rotates, because every time it rotates, that's the wheel spinning at different speeds. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and feel free to subscribe. This is now the third video like this I've made, so if you're interested in another one, you can click on the card on the screen or check out my channel. Like I mentioned earlier, I know this isn't exactly impressive, but I had fun making it and that's all I care about. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.